Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Hukalo Human Colonies Saturday webinar. Today is the 23rd of January, 2016. Today, we have uh, Karen Newman channeling. But before I get to Karen, I'd like to let Valerie introduce everybody in the chat. So, Valerie, are you nearby? Sure, Dan. Thank you. And we would like to welcome today Carolina, and we have Johannes, we have Michelle, Rainbow, and Sarah. Welcome everybody. That's watching from YouTube as well. Karen? Hi. Hi everyone. Um, I just need a, a minute. I have to ohm and then I will I'll be back with you. I can mute while I'm ohming or you can hear me ohming, but I'll, that's just what I do to get into um, to, to let Theos come through. And just so you know, I don't, uh, Theos really doesn't talk about Gerficnir or anything related to that. If there's any questions that you have that are in general, um, you can, you know, put them forward, but any questions related to Gerficnir or site to site or any of that stuff is, is not within their realm of, of knowing. They may know, but they probably won't tell you. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to wait a second. We, if you're too loud with you or I'm oming um, or anything, I can control your volume. So don't worry about it. Let yourself be All right. as you need to be. I'm not as loud as Rob Gothier or Brad Johnson. <laughs> so. I've never heard Brad. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> and just so you know, Karen channels videos. Oh, oh. Theos. We are so pleased to be with you today. We will speak to you about your truest self and finding your truth in every moment as it's related to the true being of who you are. And for that, we are so pleased to be able to speak to you. Namaste. Good morning, Theos. Good morning. Good morning, Theos. We would like to welcome you today to our group, and we appreciate you being here with us. Do you have a message this morning for us? 
as just a as we said, we were happy to speak to you about finding your truth in every moment, mm -hmm. the remembering of who you are. It puts forth the vantage point to see things from the highest perspective. Mm -hmm. And in that you will find your peace. In that you will know your love. And that you will know yourself. And the truest part of knowing yourself is the greatest part of knowing. So that is the message. That is what we teach and that is what we will share with you. Mm, wonderful. Mm. So anyone have any questions this morning for Theo? Mm. No questions? Mm. It's a very short webinar. Yeah, it'd be very short. Come on, you guys have to have some questions mm. about your truth. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, when we when we ask to implement new energies, as in infusions, we can't hear you, you. When we as humans ask for new infusions, meaning alien or any other. What are we truly doing to ourselves? Say it one more time because truly we did not hear you. If someone okay. can repeat it for me, for her. When we as humans ask for infusions, yes. and I've always asked, I always thought to myself, we don't even know who we are fully yet. What are we truly doing? to ourselves when we ask for different DNA infusions? In fact, you are altering the current DNA structure of who you are in the moment. But in every moment, you are changing. What you're asking when you're asking for infusions, you're asking for specific aspects of whatever race that you're taking within yourself to manifest within you, whether that is a knowing of teleportation or a knowing of minerals or an appreciation for star systems, whatever that aspect of that DNA is, it will awaken in you the inherent gifts of that race. But if your question is, am I doing it too fast to the detriment of myself, that is for you to decide. Ultimately, the truest you has nothing to do with your DNA. DNA, just like anything, manifestation of physicality, is a choice that is made on the oversoul level. You are you by design. What you are doing, and by your own design, and what you are doing by taking new DNA is you are tinkering with the current design in this mentality, in this consciousness, and you are doing it here as opposed to on the soul level. But ultimately, ultimately it is all the soul level. You yes. can ask for infusions of DNA or on your soul level, you can ask for infusions of DNA. But there is a part of you, as the creative self that you are, that wishes to tinker with the creation as it is right now. It's no different than upgrading to Sarah 2.0, Sarah 3.0, the new and improved. Right, I understand that. However... My question is towards the fact that we do not entirely know who we truly are or what's already within us. That's yes. where I'm look what I'm looking at right now. I don't see the two as being competitive. Mm -hmm. You because are only you who you are in the moment, but the truest part of you is you are divine mm -hmm. and in that way 
you are everything. Well, my my idea is that at the moment we as a species of humanity are going through a change. Uh, parts of our DNA that has been sort of what we would consider blocked or locked off for thousands of years is now opening up. We don't even know what's in there. And what is your my question is about what is in there? My question is what is in there? That's the question. What are we unlocking? It's not Pandora's box that you are unlocking. But truly, as we said, your DNA has nothing to do with who you truly are. And until you know who you are, it wouldn't matter if you had the DNA of a snail or the DNA of a human being with Arcturian or Lemurian or any of these extra strands that you're asking for. The goal of bringing in extra DNA is to awaken within you the consciousness of a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh degree being. You as human beings are opening and it doesn't really matter if you take extra DNA or not. But it is more a tool for you. The DNA does hold gifts within it, but until you know who you are, you can dip yourself in chocolate and you will never be a chocolate bar. Do you understand? You mm -hmm. can wear the clothes of many DNA strands, but until you are able to focus in on your true self, your true being, where you let go of all of the need of any identification with this race or that race, until you are able to center upon your truest divine self, none of it will make any difference. It's just like piling on different hats and different clothes. But the DNA is, as you say, in the very common phrase, a permission slip to allow you to give yourself the permission to awaken to yourself. Thank you very much. You're welcome. But don't be afraid or don't think you're missing out in any way that you're not giving yourself the chance to know yourself. But if you don't want extra DNA, don't take it. You're perfect as you are. You are enough as you are. And you have your own gifts as you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Carolina. Hello, this is Carolina. Hi, Carolina. How are you? We are. Um, I have a question. Um, is there anything my higher self would like to tell me? Your higher self would like to tell you to talk to it and not talk to us about you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Does she have a name? <clears throat> that is for you to know. Because okay. until you know yourself, there is nothing we can tell you about you that you shouldn't be able to know for yourself. Okay. We don't want to hold back information, but again, external looking every all of your answers are within you all of them and it's for you to know we could say your name is cupcake and would you believe it to be true okay do you understand there yeah. are questions that you have as human beings as beings that are wanting to know that only you can answer eternally and internally is the answer. And we encourage you to sit and ask. Karen had never had a name for us until she was 42 years old. But she had talked to us since she was five. 
It wasn't that we withheld the name from her. She simply had never asked us. And when we said to her, do you not wish to know our name? Her response was, I never thought of asking. Yeah. Ask the name because it's you. Your higher self is only you. Well, how do I connect to it? Through meditation and through simple contemplation. Yeah. Sit down and talk to yourself. Your, your higher self is not running away from you or hidden behind a tree or under a box waiting to spring out. It is truly you. Yeah. And for now, I would say your higher self's name is Carolina until <laughs> you know something different. Okay. You are you. And the imagination that you have, that you are taken to, however fantastical or far out it may seem, is really what is true. But you have to trust that. It can be a long process, but the joy is in the finding out, and the joy is in the waiting sometimes. That's all we have to say about that. Thank you, thank you. That was nice. You're welcome. I have another question. Um, okay. I've, I've been I've been hearing some uh, high pitched noises in my ear, and I think I'm linking that to presences that come to visit me. Um, is that true? If so, um, do you know who they are? What is you are hearing in your ear? You said like like a high pitch. Uh, ringing noises. Sometimes it is just presences that wish to be acknowledged and again as you acknowledge them you will become more aware of them. It is also changes in frequencies and tonal things that are happening as dimensions shift and change as you shift and change. So you should immediately when you hear something, check to see if it's not just a dimensional shift happening or an energetic shift happening, but truly ask the question, is there a message for me? And whatever comes into your mind in that moment, trust that as the answer. I can help you find a place if you turn on location services. Go to location services mm -hmm. settings, scroll to Syria dictation and allow location access. We do not know what just happened. That was an interesting little um, interjection there, Theos. Mm. <laughs> yes. Um, I just Absolutely. muted Carolina, so um, I'll, I'll mute her again and um, see where we go from there. But do you understand, when the, when the pitch happens, immediately say, is there a message for me? And if you get no message, say, was that a shift? Was that a transition? You may be coming sensitive to the awareness of energetic shifts. And that is only just to make you aware. If there's truly a message, it will pop into your head. But sometimes things happen and you can just say, okay, I felt something. We don't get specifically that there is a message, only that you are becoming aware. Gifts of knowing are side effects of awakening. You are all of the things that you would expect to be, such as psychic and aware, and you have ways of tuning in. But those are all side effects of awakening. It's always been there, but as you awaken, all of a sudden you can see them, you can feel them, you can experience them. And we say to you, that is what's happening in the moment. You are becoming more aware. Okay. Thank you so much. That was You're very welcome. nice. That was very nice. Much love. Much love. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. Rainbow, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, hello, Theos. Hello. Uh, my question pertains to manifesting. Now, in waking state, and what I hear from channel is, is 
we shouldn't have an expectation when we want to manifest something as in a one-to-one -one reflection. So say we want to manifest, um, say we want to manifest a tree, we shouldn't expect it to be a one-to-one -one reflection of what we see in our mind's eye. However, if we're in a lucid dream and we do want to manifest a tree, it will be a one-to-one -one reflection in the mind's eye. Which, so I'm thinking, how come are we more powerful in a lucid dream than in the waking state? And should I see it as more powerful or is it a different game in the waking state than it is in the lucid dream? First question. Very different game. Lucid dreaming takes us to a universe where there is instant manifestation and you think of your tree and your tree is there. It is a teaching ground to show you the process of manifestation, though in the translation into this world, it can look so much different. Karen has the experience in her lucid dreaming where she moves furniture around all the time and her dreams are progressing where she has started with small dressers and now she is moving houses from place to place. And when she awakens, she can't understand how she's not able to do it in her waking life. It takes her a good 20 minutes to come back into this reality. But this reality is set up at this moment with these restrictions. It's sort of a cruel joke in a way, but not really, that you have the memory of the things that you can really do because the disappointment comes when you come back into this world. But if you truly understood that this world was created by each being to be exactly as it is right now, the restrictions that you have are only part of the playing. It is another aspect. The one thing you can trust and perhaps take comfort in is that you also, in your lucid state, in your lucid reality, have the ability to do everything. And believe us, when you are in the lucid reality, you are also completely aware and completely experiencing and completely enjoying your ability to manifest your tree. It's hard not to be impatient here, but it is what is here now. It will change in time, but time is a linear thing. And at this moment, there are very few, if any, that have the ability to break that barrier between this reality and that reality. It's not impossible, but we did set it up this way, we being all of us, mm -hmm. to be what it is. So enjoy your lucid dreaming and manifest trees. It doesn't mean that the manifestation here won't happen, but it's not right now. We wish we had better words or we wish we had a button we could give you to push but we don't. And that's all right now. because um, I like this reality for the fact that it's really based on trust. Um, trust and empowerment in the idea of a higher self. But so then tell yourself that when you don't manifest your tree. My second question is to any tips on lucid dreaming because I am just now starting to do the journal, um, some meditations, got some audio stuff, but like my highest excitement really is lucid dreaming because my highest excitement is flying. Flying is fun. Yes. You need to notice the moments where you are most easily moved into a lucid dreaming state. Take note. How are you laying down? What is your mood? What time of day? What are your thoughts? It is a scientific process 
sometimes and many times for most people it happens by accident and that is how you become aware but in being in control of your lucid dreaming state you need to become a scientist and try and replicate each time you have a successful lucid dreaming state so if you notice that you do it much more easily in the middle of the day or the middle of the night take mm -hmm. note and l outline your process for many people it can be very different mm -hmm. for Karen she knows that her lucid dreaming state is in the afternoon and it's usually between the hours of 3 and 4 in the afternoon she lays down always on her back yep. always with her hands folded across of her stomach and her neck is very evenly supported mm. and as she goes into the lucid dreaming state she wakes up where she is but it doesn't happen for her in the middle of the night okay. and it doesn't happen for her when she goes to sleep at awkward hours but that for her is her time and she noticed it and now can replicate that and we would recommend the same to you it's best to set intent early in the day and hold the intent as long as you can throughout the day before you go into your lucid dreaming experimentation because when you do wake up when you do get there you will already know what you want to do and it won't be just by chance it will be quite directed okay thank you really do good. you know do you know how you lay how you sleep your times what works for you at this moment um, I know that lying on the back is the main one that came to my mind um, but time wise um, really mornings but it's about having the I'd say discipline I don't know if that's the right word but to do it when you're tired mm. everything yeah. is a discipline even sleeping <laughs> last question yes it's about the migration of the North African Muslims and generally Muslims into Europe and the relationship between this sacred feminine now coming out and how Muslim men see women as really sex objects not generalizing here but this seems to be the fear-mongering a lot of the Europeans do now and some of it is true because in Egypt they have the rape gangs and I just want to hear your point of view on this what is interesting is that people want to categorize everyone as the same and we know that is not the case the culture within the Islamic community in the truest sense is supposed to hold women in the highest regard they are supposed to realize that a woman is the channel of bringing a divine being into the world Muhammad revered his mother Muhammad revered his wife and he spoke the words to protect a woman to give her her place just like in the West women are marginalized to such a degree that they have become property and they have become better to be not seen than seen because the men are not demonstrating any control you can imagine in a society where a woman is completely covered and completely hidden from view because the very sight of her ankle can throw you into disarray looking into the West where women do flaunt themselves as sexual objects and do 
not value themselves as they say they do, but truly do not. Every advertisement that sexualizes a very young girl and sexualizes a woman is only telling everyone that the woman is only an object. The woman can only be this. She should only be young. She should only be thin. She should only be sexual. So you can imagine when people from another society come into the Western world, they are seeing billboards and advertisements and television shows and people walking in front of them that are the very thing that they have been warned about. The reaction to this is quite unfortunate, but the integration of the beings coming in, the beings being the people in the migration, for them is quite a culture shock. And that holding on to a religion that teaches them that these women are First, not believers in what they believe, but secondly, prostituting themselves openly. We're not saying it is correct, we're just telling you the way it is. What will happen, as in any generational situation, is that people will become used to the ways of the Western world. But it is a huge shock for them. It is the same as if someone took you and dropped you into the Middle East and told you you had to cover up, told you you had to pray five times a day, told you you had to do all these things. How would you react and what would your resistance be? It is a cultural shock. It will have influence, though, as they come over because they will be exposed to a new way of life but many of them will hold on tighter to their current way of life it's not going to be instant at all and it will take time and there will be a lot of upheaval as these two peoples try to s interact with each other and intertwine we will say to you that it was not so different many years ago in the Christian world where women would show their ankle or not cover their head in church or do something that we perceive now to be quite normal. It is the way of progress and it does take time. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's been very good. Thank you, Theos. I'm a huge fan and much appreciate to Karen for bringing you through. Thank you. You're a big fan of you. Thanks. Wonderful. Chris, would you like to go next? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Hi, Theos. Hello. Um, before I ask my question, I actually have a question regarding um, who you are as in dimensionally, con um, physically, and whatnot? We will start with the whatnot. <laughs> we are aspects of Karen's oversoul. We are ascending beings. There are three of us. And we have been aware of Karen. We are not aware of our full oversoul because that is not our focus, but we became aware of Karen because of her asking, because of her wanting to know. And the three of us are what you would call a group mind. We exist in many dimensions when we wish to have focus of that, but we also just exist. There are many dimensions that are instant and then are not, because dimensions at the highest level twist and turn on each other and form pockets, and then they dissipate, just sort of the idea of a lap. When you sit down, you have one. When you stand up, you don't. 
but the lap in the moment is true. When you stand up, it is nowhere to be found. That is sort of the way we exist within dimensions. We go, we experience, and we actually don't go. We just point our focus. So right. we say that we are part of the highest dimensions, 17th, 18th, 19th, but sometimes we are one dimensional, sometimes we are fifth dimensional. Oh. For us, it's only being and not so much existence. We do have form only for continuity of our selves. So we would look a little bit like a very long, not long, tall being with no hair, a wider head, sort of like the tall white that you know, but truly we have no physical form, but only an outline for, again, the continuity of ourselves. But we are light. We could manifest and you would see something as a being as opposed to just a flash of light. So where we are is everywhere and we only, again, are here to teach Karen, to talk to her, to help her prop up her vibration in her own knowing. We started talking to her when she was five years old because she was asking with such determination that she had to know. And in each demand of who am I, why am I here, who is God, we found it very nice to give her an answer. And so our relationship began. And in the beginning, we were just her teachers, and we would speak specifically to her about her, but also about the relationship of her to God, of her to the universe, of her to herself and to others. And we taught her, hopefully, that she truly knows what is the absolute truth of being and why you are here. And we always try to remind her to remember who she is in the larger sense so that she can see her connectivity to everyone and truly understand that she is only a part of the whole, but she is, in fact, the whole. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah, that's great, actually. Thank you. Um, so, people, so those people who can see interdimensionally um, in light being forms would be able to see you in the room, perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. Great. Do you see um, us? What? Do you see us? Not at the moment. It's not right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, my... I've never been asked that question. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of us can see uh, the light beings. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, yeah, so like my question actually has to do more with um, physical um, yeah, as opposed to that interdimensional. Um, now, with the in DNA infusions and our galactic heritages, uh, where we are, like our race lineages and stuff like that, um, uh, I just, I'm putting thoughts out there first. And a lot of my friends, like, have, and, um, myself, um, like our pupils will shift um, into Lyran, Reptilian, what have you. Um, I've gotten infusions from a, a couple sources and um, the people that I kind of read, I get that they're more Lyran. 
I guess I'm like interested in this eye shifting thing. It's been very like look, looked quote unquote looked down on. Um, and I'm gonna stop there right now. <clears throat> so your question is: Is the eye shifting good or bad? Is that the uh, question? Yeah, and like if it's how do you perceive it to be? Oh, well, I perceive it as a part of myself. I mean, I'm very aware of my race lineages, and I'm also aware of, like, perhaps maybe an infusion that I've gotten that I haven't had no existence with in prior incarnations onto this planet. So um, it's kind of strange because the other eye shifters are that race lineage, and I'm not. I'm a different one. Uh, so anyway, I don't see it good or bad. I just I think it's interesting, and um, you I just are don't... a vessel. Your physical body is merely a vessel. Yeah, it is nothing more, and you will drop this vessel if you choose, and most do, to move on to wherever or to whomever you wish whether it be another vessel or whether you wish to just exist as we do because you are all things you have the ability to be all of it you most definitely share your vessel at times and there you see the shift yeah. as long as that vessel is not occupied without or unwillingly occupied, we must say. It is not such a bad thing. There are many channels who channel beings that are not their higher selves. Karen does not. She has only one time had that experience, but there are many that do. And in fact, channeling is by definition letting information come through from a source and that source can be information as in eye shifting or automatic writing or poetry or music it can be anything and it can be any manifestation it is not just this of being in semi trance and talking but you in fact are allowing another being to look through your vessel and see the world and the fact that you do it a little bit as a game and the fact that you enjoy it and like looking at it you are connecting with the being that also would like to come and have a look so we would encourage you to ask that being who they are we uh, would say to you that the fact that it comes in you are not negatively affected at least we hope but the fact that it comes in, takes a look, and then goes away, it is probably a guide for you and has manifested in such a way to bring you again to the awareness of that it exists. So we would say to you, talk to it, ask it, build a relationship, and find out what it wants to see. Yeah, um... Yeah, you are in stages of channeling in fact, and you are physically free enough to allow different manifestation within your own DNA. Your DNA will turn on and turn off, allowing you to have eyes of a reptilian or mm -hmm. eyes of a different being. You see that in people with multiple personality, which in fact the truest ones have multiple beings within them and that DNA shifts, their eye color changes, their physicality will change for a moment, sometimes their face will change. It is oh, okay. only the being who is in the ethereal world looking through your vessel and you're allowing it to be well, it's interesting. You actually answered um, like the other part of the question. Well, it was something. 
Yeah, and about the, how it actually physically manifests, like eyes changing, and you know what you're saying, facial features changing by the DNA changing itself. So look at it as look at it as, and this is not the way it is, but it's only for the visualization visualization understanding. Look at it as closets full of clothing that you have within your body. And you have DNA, which is made up of twisted helixes of cells and proteins and all these things. Within each of those proteins is information. Some of them, as Sarah was saying, had not been awakened. But when they do truly awaken, for that moment and they can be turned on and turned off as we know so when they're turned on that means your eyes are slit or your eyes are as they are now or perhaps they are black that is that DNA manifestation and one DNA is turned off when another one is turned on and when that being leaves he closes the door and the other door is reopened. It's pretty much that simple. Theos, would you mind me adding some human science um, to what you have just mentioned? We would not mind if it makes sense. We are only joking with you, of course. Please add what you want. Be careful, I like to joke too. <laughs> we think we're so. sorry, we're not sure if it's true. Yeah, nobody does. So anyway, there is scientific proof of people with multiple personalities and when um, different personalities come through, their actual eye color changes. Yes. So there is actual scientific proof out there of people being able to change their DNA, change their personality. So I just wanted to add that little bit in there for you. That is true. That is very true. Thank you. And again, many things can shift. The personality can shift. The accent can shift. The <laughs> abilities of the being can shift. Some are, some people have started speaking a completely different language. Perfect French or perfect Italian where in their other self they know nothing of it. Your DNA is just a warehouse of everything that you have been and everything that you will be if you want to talk about time as being all time at the same time or future, past and present. But there is the possibility to bring in something that is not even related to you at all. Because, in fact, it's like a person walking into a building. Your body is yours to use. But sometimes you rent a room and have a tenant, even if it's just for a moment, or have a guest, and then they leave. That is up to you how you will do that and how you will manifest that. But I would be more, I would be more impressed with the fact that it's happening and inquire more as to who this being is because the being has come to you for something yeah well um and you guys keep bringing up other stuff that's in my head but um i mean i'm pretty i'm i'm definitely aware of the being i actually have pictures of the being uh interdimensionally um and i i'm aware of it when it comes to other people who are with me as well. Mm -hmm. um, and well, it doesn't have a body. It can jump from place to place. Right, exactly. So I kind of watch it. <laughs> um, but with the accents, that's funny that you guys are talking about that. I just feel, I always felt like that was just channeling or something, like my past lives. And I know it's correlated with, like, like I said, my galactic heritage, heritages and uh, these beings. And, um, that's really fun because sometimes I'll talk in accents and I hear other people do it around me all the time too and they say I say do you have an accent and they're like 
no, but people tell me that sometimes, uh, and and it's it's fun. It's it's I can't make it happen, but it's really fun when it does happen. <laughs> but, well, the goal will be to have the control. And oh, that is the control to where yeah. you know what is happening. It is one thing to have something happen to you. There is a surprise element, but ultimately everything is about mastery. Yeah, I was like making it happen the other day, like forcing it, and it actually felt really wrong in my. It 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 felt very off-putting to myself, um, because I was trying to master it, and it it just did not make me feel like my soul was. Um, uh, I I'm seeing a clairvoyant image, but I can't put a word to it, so. It just doesn't feel home enough, I guess I'll just say. So, we yeah. Understand. We are blame. merely saying, we're not saying go out and force anything. We're just saying yeah. that the more understanding you have of how things work within you, the more ability you will have to do more. And that is the fun of the learning. And it again is about the mastery of it. Yeah, the, the only time it happened and it was fun is um, when I was just being very, very playful and my ego was totally set aside and it felt home, it felt the other person was like highly receptive of who I was and um, that was the polarity of the other option, I'll say. And I'll let other people talk at this point. Um, we, will, we will wish to say something to you because it does relate to the thing that Rainbow was asking about manifesting the tree. There is the aspect of the ego that wants the proof of knowing that something is possible. And that is not the... It is not terrible. It is not bad. What we are saying is the ego wants proof. It wants, it wants. That's what the ego is. And part of your mastery is to let the ego know that it is not able to want, want, want all the time because then the pureness of what you're asking for only becomes the ego directing. Yeah, and that brings... part of this world, one moment, part of this world is about having the ego under control and not needing the manifestation. That is why it is so slow in coming. It is about the letting go and as Rainbow did say, the trust that it will happen when it happens. It's a hard game, but we did set it up that way to have the wanting but then to not need the wanting. It's a paradox but it is what it is. Yeah, that makes sense in the um, quote-unquote ascension process where if you've got ego step aside, you can go higher into the expanded realms, I'll say. But if you're going downward, that's the reverse process. I just keep getting like root chakra, red, um, density. So, Different there is value. There is value in the lower energies. It is all experience and understanding of the experience. So sometimes we go low, sometimes we go high, but it's all for the experience. Yeah. And if you know that that is the reason, you have the appreciation of whatever it is that comes to you or whatever yeah. it is you make. I love that. Okay, that's perfect. That's so resonant. Yeah, it's hu the human play. Okay, great. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Theo. You're welcome. Great. It's very nice speaking to you. Namaste, Theo. Namaste. I just want to check in with Karen. Um, mm. Make sure um, everything's okay and you're right. Carry on if you, if you wish. We are fine. And we are able to continue. Okay, perfect. Uh, Wonderful. Okay. 
Wonderful. From Cher, who is unable to make it into our uh, hangout today, there is two questions, or two-part question. The first part being, do my guides or higher self have any questions for me in general? And about a job, am I going to finish, or I'm going to finish my internship school in one of Israel channels on 15-2? This is more a question for Karen. She's the psychic. We would say to you again, as we said to Carolina about the higher self, Talk to yourself. The answer about what your higher self would say to you is, Hello, I am here. Talk to me. That is the need of the higher self and the need of you to know your higher self. We encourage you all to, when it comes to you, to ask questions to you, but we will check in with your higher self. We will say to you, Shia, that the message from your higher self to you, and the, your higher self has no questions for you, but the message of the higher self to you is that trust in knowing to follow your instinct is something that you are in the lessonary of at the moment. And the fact that you are unsure is because you question your instinct constantly. You have a inspiration or a feeling about something and instead of following it, you question it. And we understand that that is the lesson that you are to learn, and we will explain it like this. When you, and we wish to stop because we don't know what's the sound coming. Okay. When you have an experience, say you think that you should go somewhere, and then you find out, I don't want to go there. Instead of just trusting the fact that you don't want to go and letting that be your inspiration and your knowing, you will go to that place that you felt like you shouldn't go just for the proof that you shouldn't have been there. And we would say to you that the experience of having that knowing that you don't want to be there should be enough that you don't go, but that you shouldn't always need the proof that you were right about not going. For instance, if you go somewhere and have a terrible experience or your car is stolen or something happens and then you say, see, I had the feeling I shouldn't go, we would say to you, you shouldn't have gone and you shouldn't need the proof. The trusting of the knowing is your lesson at the moment. You are constantly getting information, but you are questioning it. And you are not questioning it within yourself. You're questioning it to other people and to everyone and to everything. And your lesson is to hear the inspiration that you have and trust your knowing. It needs to be enough that you have the feeling that you don't want to go. You shouldn't always need the proof. But that is your lesson. That is what you are working on in the moment. And we hope you understand what we mean. Now, for your school, we say a quite a little bit of a delay in finishing. And we say that it will be delayed until the five month, which is May. For whatever reason, you don't finish something, a paper, or some sort of exam, but you will be delayed for just a few months and finish a bit later than you expect. 
and we got that information from Karen mostly. She showed us that on the calendar. That is her prediction for you. So we hope we answered your question. Sher has a follow-up on that. He says that he meant that I I have no idea about if I am going to get any offers when it will be over. Any offers when it will be over for his school? Yes, I guess he's according to that. Um, I think there's a trust level of, of, of what, what, is it, what he will achieve or where he will go. Whatever he will begin, it will begin in May. Thank you, Theos. But he will be finished in May. That is what we are being told by Karen. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now we have a question from another who is unable to be in the room. This is from Mary G. And she says, hello, Theos. Hello, Mary. <laughs> No, I lost it. Hold on just a second here. Okay, there we go. Um, I am actually going through my ascension symptoms. Or am I going through my ascension symptoms? Any advice for me? We would advise you to just enjoy the proof that everyone is always looking for for their status of level. If you believe you are having ascension symptoms, then we will say to you, look at it as an achievement and just enjoy it. I, we would like to know what these symptoms are so we could address them individually if she can answer. But truly, ascension is a process and it's a state of being and there is, until you are ascended, it doesn't really matter if you're at level 1 or level 700. It is still the process. And the symptoms may be just markers for you. And maybe you want them for the proof of where you are. The need for them, we would say, it's okay to let them go too and not have to have any kind of ascension symptoms. Does she answer about what her symptoms are? No, she does not. There is a need within people to have proof, to have verification, and we understand. It is not to say it's wrong. It's not wrong. But again, the and it would be in the very beginning that you would have sort of these symptoms. Sometimes physically your body cleanses and lets go. And sometimes mentally your mind cleanses and lets go. And depending on how much monk and gunk you have, how dirty it is in the way of clogged up and backed up and stuffed up, it can be transitionatory for the body. It can be transitionatory for the mind. It can disrupt your environment. But again, we would say to you, enjoy it. Know that it is the process of delivery, of deliverance, of achievement, of progression. And At one moment, your symptoms will subside. It may take many years. It may happen in a moment when you decide that you don't need them anymore. So it is your own manifestation about, about what you believe should happen to you when you start to awaken. But we are more pleased that you are waking up. And we are more pleased that you are focused on becoming who you really are and knowing who you really are. So for that, we celebrate your symptoms. 
we don't wish you more, but we wish you more knowing. And that's all we have to say about that. Thank you, Beers. Mm. Much love. Much love. Sarah? Hello again, Theos. Hello again, Sarah. Um, I have a question. Uh, this week, I seem to have seen a vision of a being, but everything was black, and the be the being was in like a white outline, but it seemed to be hiding behind something. And I'm wondering, is this a shadow being, or is it something that I just can't see at the moment? I'm not understanding. It seemed to be a four-legged creature, or I don't know. I don't even know what it is, and I keep asking, and I'm not really getting anything. We would say to you that you need to employ your psychological understanding to the situation and look at the symbolism of what you have described. Shadow beings are not white. First of all, light beings, angelic beings, higher dimensional beings are white. So we will say to you that it is a higher dimensional being. A higher dimensional being would not necessarily hide, but we would say if it appeared to be hiding, in fact it was being a little bit blocked by you. So the question is, why are you blocking it? And we have an answer, but we don't want to put words in your mouth. But we will say that the reason that you are blocking it, and we will put them in just for a moment, is because you are not sure, as you said. You're questioning. And that is okay. But now is the time to speak to the being welcome the being, invite them to come forward. I did, it says, actually. Well, very good. Then wait for that being to come forward. And we would ask you, how did you feel when you saw the being? What was your feeling that uh, you had? Hello. Please come forward. <laughs> we'll continue to ask the question. <laughs> There are beings all around us all of the time. There are manifestations that are with us all of the time. And if you have the ability to see, we know the phrase that says, for those that can see, let them see. Sometimes it's with our physical eyes. Sometimes it's with our third eye. Sometimes it's within our mind. But the seeing and the believing and the understanding is just that about the trust. That being may not be standing there anymore, but there are always beings all around. And sometimes, just like you would see people walking down the street, it's only for you to acknowledge that they are there and celebrate the fact that you were able to see anything. Look at everything as a progression of your awakening and sometimes everything doesn't have a direct meaning, but only is a demonstration of what you can now do, see, experience, and know. You would do just as well to be fascinated by a dog running down the street, because in fact it's sort of the same thing on the astral street in front of your house or that runs through your living room. There are beings moving always multidimensionally. So mm -hmm. perhaps you are now opening your multidimensional eyes and being able to see what has already always been there. Yes, that was going to be my next question. I actually we like saw... to jump ahead. Yes, that was it. <laughs> because I did see a being with three eyes. Like, third eye was definitely there. And I thought that being was connected to me in some way, fashion, or that it was me. And something about my third eye being opened, because the eye actually opened, as in three eyes. When you do have the ability to see, 
other beings notice that you can see and perhaps they were also just saying hello without words you did say hello which is very good but mm -hmm. now it's just the time of observing oh this being has three eyes when there is beings that do come into your planetary system and land on the ground the more you have seen interdimensionally the less they will be shocking to you when they walk off their ships so makes sense be happy that you are able <laughs> to see even when they have three eyes and six toes and their arms on their back <laughs> just a manifestation yeah. and Thank we would you say to you it is just again for it to be seen and the connection to you it's like you had your light on and they showed themselves to you but were not forceful in doing so and stayed back just in case it was too much for you to handle because there is within the universe that concern with people mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. rushing up to you would have been a lot more jarring than something standing back and looking around the corner as it did to you that's correct <laughs> much love much love okay Stephen are you ready yes thank you uh, hello, hello Stephen hello how are you? We are always awesome. Hello? Uh, he's froze. We can still hear you. Can you still hear us? Oh, yes, yes, now I can. I froze for a second. Yes, I just wanted to. Uh, um, I've been getting a lot of uh, sensations around my third eye and around my head, uh, uh, and I've been. Uh, opening myself up to connecting uh, with other entities. I just wonder if you had any more information about uh, these energies. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. It is very nice to be able to feel your third eye because it does exist, though it is not manifested right in part of your forehead in this third dimensional world that you can see. But we will tell you, just like Sarah just said, and this is such a wonderful synchronicity that in another dimension another being would see you with your third eye there because that is how you truly are the eye that is on your forehead does exist so feeling it is part of knowing that it's there and trusting that it is there the activation of it is the energies that you're feeling and when it comes to other entities again we will tell you that there are always entities around you it is the awareness of you that is awakening to know that they are there but they have always been there we described it once and we liked our description but awakening is much like having your arm behind your back for your entire life and then all of a sudden your arm comes loose and you say wow I've had an arm here but we will tell you the arm has always been there but not only do you realize you have an arm but you start to be able to use it everything that you have is always part of you it's always been there it's just the peeling back of the restriction and the veil that keeps you from the awareness of it when you see things multidimensionally, as our friend was talking about earlier, you see things that other people can't, but they are very, very real, and they are very much there. And again, we will tell you, it's always been there. People think gifts that they have is something bestowed on them because they've earned them, or some god giving you something because you are deserving and you are deserving that is not our point the point is that it is the awakening to the fullness of who you are but the gifts and we call them gifts because that is the word that humanity uses but these abilities which we think is a much better word are always there you just don't know they're there 
and the awakening is coming into the knowing. So we would say play with the sensation of your third eye and welcome the beings that you've now become aware of because they are always there. Now you just know they're there. And that's a beautiful thing. We'll take that as a confirmation. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. I have a baby. Yes. We uh, like little... babies. <laughs> yeah. Is that a little fun? I, uh, thank you for that uh, very much. One more question. Um, yeah. Is there any uh, beings directly around me uh, that uh, I think you would like to ask your baby? Yeah, baby. Yeah. Beings around. <laughs> hmm. he, sees, uh, he sees, I believe. Uh, the... I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> what is your question? Oh, I just wonder if there's any messages for any beings directly around me. If they if they want to connect with me right now, if they uh through uh this uh this interaction. We see right now around you a purple light and we see that that energy is moving into your aura. And that purple is the manifestation of spirituality coming through and the beings that are associated with you are there to guide you so we would encourage you to ask who specifically are your teachers so that you can learn specifically from them we understand because we asked Karen why Everyone is constantly asking for information from their higher selves without actually first speaking to their higher selves themselves. And we now understand that there is the belief that you don't know, but we will tell you, in fact, you don't not know, but you do know. Everyone, and we would encourage you, and we speak now to everyone, your relationship with you, your guides, your higher self is the personal goal that you should have because you will get so much more information. You are missing something and we will tell you what we believe that it is. There is One moment. There is a need for achievement, and we understand. Achievement is not the goal. The knowing is the goal. The relationship is the goal. What more of beautiful thing can you have than a relationship with the larger part of you? And every time you look outside of yourself, for an answer, you will never get the answer that would come from within you. There is not a bigger answer than that. It is so simple. It is so profound in its, what is the word? It's so profound in its truth that it is hard to grasp because the simplicity of it is so tiny. Every single one of you is connected to all that is. You are divine. You are part of that allness. And your higher self is truly only you. But it's the part of you that is not enclosed in this physical body. That is your through line. That is your tether to all that is. But it is not separate than you. It is like a tree. And you have the tree that is on the ground. You have the ground, which is the veil between the worlds. And then you have the root system. And that is your higher self. The root system that is not seen when you look at that tree that rainbow is manifesting. But in fact, the root system and the tree on the ground is one tree. 
There is no separation between you and you. You are one. And that is part of source. And in source is connected to everything because everything is that source. You are the manifestation of the divine. So in trying to contact your higher self, seek the relationship. Don't only seek answers. The higher self is not there to just give you predictions and give you information, but it's you getting to know you because you're worth knowing. We can't say it any stronger than that, but you need to seek yourself. And when you know yourself, you will know everything. And that is the purest truth. And what is more beautiful than that? Nothing. So the message from your higher self is know me. Know yourself. Ask yourself. Listen to yourself. Trust that you will always be able to find you. You're not hidden like the being that peeked out at Sarah. And maybe, in fact, that was her higher self looking out to her. We don't think so. But there's nothing more beautiful than the relationship of you to you. And that is always the message of the higher self. Know me. And when you know yourself, you will know that you are one with everything, that you are divine, and that you are love. That is our message to you and to everyone. Stop asking what messages are there. Seek yourself. Seek your connection, and then you will have very few questions. Thank we you. love you. Yes, we love you, and we hope we answered your question. Okay, I've still got about 30 minutes left. Hmm. An hour and a half. How long do you want to go for? We can go until we are done. Okay, that's perfect. We'll carry on then. Thank you, Theos. Oh, thank you. Jay, are you ready? I am. We are. We Hi, like. Theos. Hi. I once had a dream where a man appeared, making a symbolic hand gesture. Afterwards, a being that looked like a shadow appeared, and it made an interesting sound. I was told the, name, the man's name was Almutok, and I'd like to know what connection I share with him, what the hand gesture he made means, and what the shadow being said to me. Thank you. Interesting. Yes. Well, we know Almutok as a being, especially here within human colony. Almutok is a very high level being who is involved in many workings of the universe. And the fact that you would be there with him making a gesture to you would be for us in our interpretation of this dream, which we will say was not a dream, but truly an experience. And we wish you to seek Amatok yourself to, for the clarification. But what we will say to you is this hand signal, this hand symbol that was shown to you was a greeting and also an instruction for what you are doing on the soul level. Because Amatok has his, we would say, denizens that work with him, work for him, and that he administers over. And we would say to you that on the higher part of you, you would know exactly what it was he was saying to you. Because we believe that Amatok does not have words, but he does speak telepathically and through symbolism. So it's quite normal that he would make a gesture. Though we are not 
completely sure if in fact he does have form, though it might have been that way in your dream. The shadow figure for you would be the part of your unconscious that you do not understand. Again, you did not understand Almatak, but we would say to you that your shadow figure would represent a little bit of fear, and that is the 3D part of you that didn't know what was happening, and it's the questioning that you are having. We don't perceive that the being, the three, the shadow figure said anything to you in a negative way, but it's only really your the unconscious part of you that is not understanding what is happening manifest and it's manifesting as a shadow. But with Amatok, you do have the ability to speak to him directly, not through us, but through Kim, if you are aware of her, and we would ask you to seek her out because that message will come from Amatok and not from us. We, in fact, do not know what the message would be. We are only visualizing what you have explained to us. So. I understand. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good day. Are you ready? Yes, thank you. Uh, hello, Theos. How are you? We are fine. And what is your name? My name is Ade. Ade. It's nice hello. to finally meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Um, my question is, um, there has been several entities that have been trying to channel through me, and this is sort of new for me, so I'm not 100% yet. Uh, so the message isn't very clear, so I wanted to ask you, because I heard bits and pieces of the message, and it was, seeing is believing repeatedly was said and I wanted to know if there's any more to that message and who the entities were that were around me. This was a couple days ago. We are seeing that it was four entities around you. And the seeing that they're talking about is the actual allowing of information to come through and you seeing yourself doing it. It is more of the cliche of what they were saying. Seeing is believing. Proof is in the happening. That is what they were meaning to you. Before you channel again, and we said this before, but we will say it now specifically related to what you're doing. It's important to build the relationship with the being that you are channeling. Sometimes that can happen in the moment that you are channeling them, but much of the time, especially when you are not comfortable with channeling, if it's new for you, there's always a process of learning how it feels, how it is comfortable, what works, what doesn't. So we would say to you, talk to these beings and again we have that there were four now we don't know if you perceive four but we see four bits of light and they held back from you as to not overwhelm you because four beings carry quite some energy and your vessel was not in that moment prepared to take it all in. There is a negotiation that happens with channeling where you learn to process the energy, you learn to let it flow through you, you learn the voice that comes. This voice that we speak through is much different than the voice that Karen has only because it was negotiated. When we first started speaking through her she very much did not like the voice because it was too heavy. When she first channeled us, we our energy was too strong for her and she really felt that she was being pushed down. That was not our intention, but it was more about her vessel being ready and being open and not resistant to the energy. So we would say to you, you are a little bit 
at this stage of needing to be in that negotiation process and that practice of letting something come through. Absolutely. Your beings, your beings are, in fact, they are not angelic, but we would say they are of light. And they are, hmm, interesting. They are of a earth spirit realm, but of a high realm. So we would say they are an aspect of fairy energy. But they are very big beings. Fairies are huge beings. And that energy for them to be concentrated together is quite interesting. We would see that you would not be channeling them as a group, as we are channeled as a group, but that you would be able to switch between the four of them. They feel distinctly feminine to us, though there is one masculine energy there. And they are beautiful beings. And we do have the feeling that they make you feel lighter, that you, when you experience them, feel light. That is how we perceive them, that there is light coming from them, shining on you. So now it's time you can let them shine through you. But it's the negotiating process that you need to have with each one of them. And again, the name that they will give you is really for you to get. Because everything that we tell you until you experience it and internalize it will never be true for you. So build the relationship with them so that when whatever comes channeling through you, you know it, you trust it. And it's a lot easier to stay neutral as a channel because you are truly, as a channel, just a telephone, the information is coming through. So the more you feel confident, the more you feel trust, the ability to let that information come completely purely through you is much easier. You don't want parts of you coming through. You may, but truly as a channel, it is about really being a vessel of openness so that their energy can come through you. We think you will like them because they definitely are beautiful beings and positive beings. Thank you. That's such great advice. And I do feel a connection with them. I feel like I've had past lives with most of them. Another question is, I felt Jesus' energy around me. Are you able to distinguish uh, between the energies that you see around me and tell me? We did say we felt one was distinctively male. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay, totally. Thank you so much, Theos. Much You're love. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Yeah, thank you, Theos. Thank you, day. All right, Michelle, are you ready? I am ready. Good morning, Theos. Good morning, Michelle. I, I often tease Karen um, about how different our perception and experiences are because she has had such a close relationship with her higher self since such a young age. And um, I've had, like, energetically speaking, a lot happening this week, maybe the most profound so far on this journey. You and, feel um, to us at the moment like you're quite stoned. If that's a good word. <laughs> I have a lot of energy rolling through me. Um, yes. You feel you very high. Yeah. yeah. I feel like uh, a lot of Arcturian, Pleiadian, Angel. I had an activation with Michael for toning and healing this week, so that was a big deal. One of my questions was I was told in a past life regression so that I am a fractal of Archangel Michael. So does that make, if you're a fractal of that, does that make him the oversoul? Is... In our, no, it does not. Okay. Because 
if you are a fractal of him, he is also a fractal of you. Up. Oh, he can have other fractals that are not part of you, and that is part of the creation, which mm -hmm. is so very complicated. And but we'll try to break it down in in a way that's easy to understand, but realize that it's so much more complex. We will first explain to you time. That and this is the way we explained it to Karen when she was just a child. But we find it's the best explanation ever given for anything that was ever was. And that again is a joke. There is what we call all time at the same time, right. which means everything that is or will be or was is. And not is now, which now all everything is now. That gets very complicated. But everything is. It is. And if you picture a, we don't have them as much anymore, but a comic book page with small little windows where each comic progresses through the strip of a picture of them laying down, the picture that everything is really a moment and it's all laid out it's infinite to be seen it goes in every direction and it's not truly flat as we're saying but everything exists what is not existing for you at the moment is the consciousness of what's happening here or what's happening there so you Michelle are here in your consciousness but your past life is there, your future life is there, your congruent lives are here, here, and here. An oversoul is like a lump of clay. And you have other parts of that soul manifesting as extensions of the oversoul. Michael and we're not talking about dimensional levels because Michael is existing on the highest of dimensions. He is as close to the divine, the true source of divine as you can get. But Michael is an aspect of your oversoul. But oversouls are huge and there are almost infinite manifestations of an oversoul. The point is, you are sharing the same oversoul. So, in fact, you are a fractal of him. Okay. Or the other exclamation explanation can be that you are a creation of Michael himself, a fractal of Michael, which is better of an explanation. Because within each manifestation creation is also that ability to create so within his creative infinite mind would be you created as an extension of him so in the line of oversoul Michael or oversoul Michelle it doesn't really matter because it all lumps back into the same oversoul but we would say as a fractal of Michael that you are a creation of his creative mind. Say, we sure. said recently that you are the perfect thought of the divine. If you close your eyes, you will find you are standing in the mind of the divine. But so is every being. And every being in the infinite wisdom of the divine also has a mind in which to create and that what is created has a mind to create and so on and so on that's why it gets to be so big and so crazy and so hard to understand mm -hmm. but realize you are part of him he is part of the oversoul but by definition you are part of the oversoul thank you it's for that too big to explain <laughs> so but it is what in it, fact the way things are thank you so much for that explanation mm -hmm. um, I was very curious about that um, the other thing is is that what I feel like I've been able to what I 
want to do is be more in tune, like Karen is with you, with my higher self. So I felt, my intuition felt um, like it will lead me to things to find out the things I've found out thus far. And I follow that. But I've also had instances like where I had a friend who started channeling my higher self to me and said that I don't always hear or I don't pay attention. And so you I wonder if my... your friend to channel <laughs> <laughs> So I would like to know if, um, if there is a way um, particularly that is the most beneficial for me to hear is there... Does my higher self have a message for me in a way to better connect to my higher self, like a, a preferred method that would work the best between okay. us? Well, we said it earlier, but we say it again in a different way directly to you. And But what your friend who channeled your higher self said is exactly true. What we would challenge you to do is to change your definition of what you think a message would be. Mm -hmm. You said there are times when I've gotten information or there are times we will tell you that that is always true. You are looking for something to be so distinctive as a message that you think that it's come sort of it's been bestowed on you by your higher self. We would say that it's always been talking to you, but you're not noticing that it is anything different. And the reason we say that is because you are learning, you are growing, you are becoming, but that's always true. And the shift in knowing the difference is just believing that whatever you feel is your higher self whatever you think and it feels like something is your higher self the questioning part the unsure part we would say to you is definitely you but you get information all the time and you have questions all the time about the information that you are not sure about but where do you think this information is coming from it's coming from you and your higher self can speak to you not only in words in your head but will direct you to the right book to see the right phrase or will bring to you a shiver of coldness or a moment where you turn your head at just the right moment and see something amazing or see something terrible it can happen both ways but that is the shift it's the realization that your higher self is already talking to you and to trust that. It's just a subtle shift. And the only thing we can tell you is to realize that when you get something, instead of asking us, did we get it? Did I get it? Do I understand it? What is the thing about it? Realize that that is it. How many times do you ask someone, is this right? And they say to you, yes. But you got the information. The only thing that's questioning it is you. This part of you. But the information that you got was, in fact, your higher self giving you that information. You have to realize that it's not only your higher self talking to you as a separation. It's the larger part of you talking to you. So it's only you talking to you. Does that make sense? Do you? Yes. Yeah. So for instance, last night, um, mm -hmm. I picked up a stone, a new stone, and uh, Julie. Why did you pick it up? Well, I picked it up to show Julie and ask if it had, she reads crystals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so she said it was really good for writing, and I am really resistant to writing. And so my thought was, oh, maybe you're supposed to be writing. And I was like, yeah, but I don't like to write. Well, there's your answer. <laughs> so that would be like my higher self show. Uh, I mean, could I take that 
kind of interaction as my higher self said, hey, hear this information. And I hear this information and my resistance is like, yeah, but I don't like to do that and I don't really want to. <laughs> so well, would that be an example? Maybe, maybe your higher self is telling you, no, that's not for you because you don't like to write. Your higher self is not there to make you do things that you don't want to do. It's there to communicate with you. It's not going yes. to make you do gymnastics in order to. It's not going to make you cl climb the highest mountain to find the guru at the top. So I'm it's still the same confused. thing as Dorothy saying, "Happiness was in my own backyard." Mm -hmm. She found what she always wanted, where she already was. She went to Oz, but she was actually only needing to realize that she just needed to be at home with, with exactly what she had. In the moment. In the moment. Thank you. But it's also, it's also just the trusting that the information you need will come to you. We know that you say constantly, I got this information, does anyone else have that? Well, we will tell you that information you got is your higher self. But perhaps there's not a big distinction between your higher self and the you that is Michelle. So you're looking for where did that come from? What well, it came from you and trusting that it, the, the you, the higher self of you is the one giving you the information. That is the little shift that needs to happen. And trusting okay. that. Okay. So we promise, Karen is saying, to tell you that, that when you do it, she will say, there's your higher self. It's just a small, minor shift of knowing the difference. We'll give you a very good example. And this is an example Karen just told us to tell you. But when she was selling shoes, and she would ship shoes to people, Always on the day that the shoes were to arrive, people would send her a message and say, where are my shoes? And she would go and track them and see, in fact, they were out for delivery and would be there within a few hours. And what she started to notice is that so many people did this, and she wondered why did they always ask her this question on the moment that the shoes were going to arrive? And it's because they didn't understand that the thought of the shoes coming in was being misinterpreted as to where are they as opposed to they're on their way. The expectation yeah, of the information is different. If you expect and know that the universe, that your higher self is always giving you information, then you don't question the information. You trust it. Shoes, oh, they must be on their way. What a subtle difference that is. And instead of the people having the realization that because those shoes were close, they were feeling the energy of the imminent delivery of their shoes, instead they asked her the question. And she had to tell them what was always true. The shoes were on their way but they didn't know the difference. And it's really the same with you. You don't know the difference between information and the absence of it. Because always, when you ask the question, you usually are giving yourself the answer. The answer is always in your question. You just real, you're, you're getting the information. You're hearing shoes, and you're thinking, I don't know where my shoes are, as opposed to shoes. They're coming. Shoes will be here any moment. It's a subtle, subtle shift. And it only comes by practice, a practice of trusting. Okay. That's the achievement. It's not that your higher self, which would be very nice, and maybe it will happen for you, and if it does, please share it with everyone, will not arrive with fanfare and say, we are now your higher self here to answer your question. Because it's always been there all along. Right. It's just you knowing that it's there. Thank you so much. Yeah. Much love to you. Much love to you. Okay.
So, mm. thank you so much, Michelle. That was a great question, and thank you, Theos. I have a question now from Vix Christine, who is unable to make it in today. But she asks, well, first she says, hello, Theos. Hello. And her questions are about Ormus. Is it beneficial to mankind? We are not familiar with Ormos is. If you can explain, we can give our opinion, but we don't know what Ormos is. You know, I really don't know either myself, um, and there's really no explanation for it on here, just more questions about it. So I guess we'll pass to the next questioner, and that would be Johannes. Thank you. I could have explained If you get the information, yes, if you have the information, please share it with us. It's not a term that we are familiar with. Yes, this is something from actually from my past. Um, it's um, Ormus is also called Orms, obviously rearranged monotonic elements. It's, it's also known as colloidal, also known as monotomic. Um, it's a structure of an element that has its own, how can I explain this best? It, it has its own quality because it's its own monotomic element. It's not bonded to anything. And how is it used? And it's used for healing. It's um, ingested, is it correct? It can be ingested, it can be used on the skin. Um, it's almost like colloidal is, silver. Is that yes. correct? It's any, okay. it's, it's any it's that's what, it's anything that can be colloidal colloidal. We understand. So a monotomic element. Anything like that that helps the body align closer to its most healthy self can be beneficial. That is really the answer. The, the practice of consuming or using would have to be undertaken over the long term. We would say to you, you can also align in other ways, but if for you or for other people it is necessary for healing of some skin problems or internal problems, it can be very much used in that way. If you feel connected to it, if you feel drawn to it, we would say to you there is a reason and perhaps your body or other people's bodies are needing that element to, or that form of healing property to be used. It is, if you feel or feel attracted to it, there is a reason and you should trust it. Uh -huh. It does have healing properties. It's not the only thing, but it is definitely one of them. And it came into humanity's awareness for the very reason to be used. Yes, it's an ancient um, alchemic technique. It's quite an old word, but it's starting to come back around again. Because we people we are understand. understand that yes. Obviously, it's not just gold and silver that's monatomic. There's more elements as well. So yes. We look forward to and that. And they do help you to align to your healthiest self. And also, in, in trying to be healthy and in trying to align your energy, you are also able to awaken more. So it does have those properties as well. Some people, okay. some people don't, but it's up to you. And if you feel attracted to that thing, we would encourage you to employ it because okay. it's obviously calling to you. The next question was if it was a good idea for her to try to make it herself. Why not? Perfect. Follow Is there any the recipe, find a guide who knows what they're doing. Please, yes. please. Yes. Disclaimer yes. here as well. If you are going to change any of your medication, please consult your GP, doctor, physician, or whatever first, please. Well said, Rowie. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is there any hidden knowledge? We don't know yet about Ormos. Yes, but there's so much hidden knowledge about everything that we don't know about everything. The point of anything like that is helping the body to align. The reason is on a multi-dimensional level. Metals have properties that work with us. They can also be quite detrimental to us. So as Roy was saying, be sure that you know what you're doing and you're not turning your kitchen into a scientific experience much to the detriment of your own body. But what will come is the fact that again it's a permission slip for you to use. We would trust more the fact that you are attracted to it and you have the questions that you would want to learn something. We don't see it as being the end-all, be-all, and answer to all of humanity's questions, but we will say that there are, as Roe used the words, alch alch we can't even say it, alch <laughs> sorry. Alchemy. Thank you, alchemaic. We were trying to say alchemy and aic at the same time, but alchemaic properties that would be beneficial to you that you should uh, explore and use. But again, it is only one truth that is out there, and there are many. Great. Thank you so much. We appreciate your answer, Theo. Alchemical. That's a new word for us. Hmm. But I think I just made it up, to be honest with you. Perhaps that is why it is so new. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Johannes, are you ready? Ready, ready. I'm not ready that much because I forgot the name. <laughs> Theon, Theos. 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 Mm. Hello. Um, I have, I think, two questions. First question that come to my mind now was, I have the experience of things happening to me at the same time, and I have to deal with them in my mind first of course because that's how you plan the manifestation of the future but it's still happening it's like still and I'm still put my I, I, I put myself in stress yes I do but that's just to get things done <laughs> so again my question would be no I have the answer already of that okay so my question would be we are that good. We sent you the answer before. Yeah, I don't have the question anymore. I'm sorry. Okay, so next question. I have um, I have disappointment in. I I've had this hangout now that we had as as the explanation of of my my questions too. So I've already had a lot of answers of this this hangout. So I'm grateful for giving me already the answers that I actually needed but I will just doubt it a little bit just to put a question there um, my disappointments are in the category of that I already know a lot of shit and I know that I know and then situation in my life keeps me frustrated and disappointed also because I don't give myself the credit, which I understand that I'm not doing, I'm not, but the feeling that I have is that it's, I'm, I'm here to give this to other people, I'm not here to know, I already know, it's like I already know everything, you know, and then I, it comes this interesting feeling that, you know, why am I not doing and manifesting better results of what I already know? So that I will stop there and see if there's an answer. Thank you. You said many, many, many things, but we understand the gist of your question. It's the process that you find frustrating and we would say to you it's the process that we wish that you would try to appreciate 
because again everything is just experience and that's the larger answer but it's the frustrating one for mankind the divine relishes every experience because it's a new experience it's something that was never before experienced in quite the way from the perspective that only you can have so in that way it is all fascinating and from the observer standpoint we would say the divine is saying wow how interesting how complex how perfect is this particular experience as you are manifest yourself you don't have that perspective in your mind at all times and that therein you get caught in the situation believing that it is real believing that it is important and truly just wanting the outcome that you want so we would say to you try to step out a little bit and know what you know not from the mind of Johannes but from the divine aspect of yourself and watch yourself and don't put so much pressure on you because you're doing fine and if something doesn't happen right in the moment that you Johannes this one wants it laugh and look for the things that are happening and appreciate them that might sound trite to people because they want what they want when they want it but that is the lesson you have in this world this reality the distinction of time you have to look at it like a coffee filter and everything coming through it the percolation but it's even slower it comes when it comes and it comes precisely at the right moment and if it doesn't come there's also a reason but there is not really a magic button to push and all of a sudden you'll be okay with everything but that is the practice that is the lesson that is the mastery that we speak about being able to see the world from the perspective that it is experience for the sake of experience now we will give you the idea that sometimes things drag out in a very long way and they can be quite frustrating but they are always at the delight of the divine and that is really the only answer that we can give you so all the stuff you know know it as the larger part of you you forget from time to time who you are and then you get angry with yourself for not remembering <laughs> but that's also the fun yeah. the game is to remember always remember who you are and when you do remember then it's all fun even the stuff that's not fun I get your point totally I will ask a question for my uh, my friend on the hospital still Gabriella she will be listening later on the YouTube I will ask um, if there are any messages for her like if there's any anything that wants to come through to her because she's pretty much closed up but but I'm just Gabriella the only message that we have for her is that trust that she will be all right and we we want to say that any challenges that, she, that she's facing in the moment are temporary and transitory and that can be in many aspects of her life because it's not only one thing that is going on with her but that is also her process sometimes when you run from your life and we get the impression that she is running in a way 
you can never run too far from yourself because no matter where you go, there you are, as they say. So she needs to just trust that she will find her way, that things will work out for her, and that she will come more into her own understanding and her own acknowledgement of her well-being. And that will, again, be across many parts of her life, not just one, but many. And to not stress out so much about anything and to find the joy in her life. It's really all we have to say to her. Everything is all good. I just want to give a message to everybody here attending and listening to this message that you are the one and you are awesome. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for this channeling. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And see you, Johannes. Same to you. Were there any more questions? Yes, we have a question from Luca, who is unable to be in the room right now. Mm. So I will ask the question. He says hello, Theos. Hello, Luca. Can you tell us something interesting about other civilizations and the way? Excuse me, just one second here. and their way of life in general, or any in particular, and with how many will humanity interact with after the first contact in general by 2050? Well, we will tell you something that's quite amusing, that there are civilizations that don't believe in you as you don't believe in them, that they have not been convinced that there is actually this planet with things called humans running around who don't know who they are. They find that to be strange and absurd. And they don't necessarily believe it's even possible. So you are, and this planet is an enigma in and of itself. It is unique in that way. There will be, when there is first contact, a slow unfolding of the amount of beings that initially come through. And the reason will be because of the initial shock of finding out for sure that in fact other beings and other civilizations exist. You will find out there's one, then you will find out there's ten, and then you will find out that you never knew the universe at all that there are thousands and millions, and many that are unknown still to even the beings that you are meeting, because the universe is in fact infinite. So how many, we would say, you will have the realization or mankind will become aware that there are infinite beings within a short period of time, but it will slowly be fed to you. First, they will find life, and it will be cellular life. Then they will find that there are creatures, little animals, fish, things like this. And then eventually it will be disclosed that there are, in fact, beings of consciousness walking around, so to speak. And then, of course, you will have your contact. But again, there is going to be such a delineation of information only because the human mind will initially have all of the reactions that the human mind has when encountering something new. And there will be, not in the initial stages, the trust for everyone about who these beings are and what they want, what is their purpose. It is the same as when you have the Syrians coming across the border. Some people are welcoming and some people are not. Some people trust them and some people don't. 
and the perception of their actions can be interpreted in many different ways. So what do you think it will be when it's a being from another place entirely that you don't understand, that has technology that you can't even grasp? But the answer is there are infinite beings. And what is the life of some beings? Well, some planets are very much like this one. And some are so completely different you could never understand. Some beings travel by actual ship, and some beings are just where they want to be, like us, because we focus upon it. Not everything is an alien being. We are light. We don't even fall into the realm of aliens. We are. We are part of the entire existence, and you will never find us on a ship. So the beings that you encounter that actually come on ships will be very much like humanity because they had to walk into a ship or float into a ship or go into a ship in order to come here. Their civilizations will have grown and experienced and developed technology and their lives can be very much like they are here having a day and a night or several days and several nights they will have male and female aspects their reproduction and things that are part of being human may or may not be manifest the same as they are here Perhaps in some civilizations it's the male that is the reproductive conduit. And perhaps it is the female. But all of those things are just merely differentiations of everything that you know. There will be and there are beings that are so completely different than what you know. There are those that have a different structure a different makeup. They are made of silicon and they have a completely different way of interacting in the world. But the ones that you meet initially will be very much like you with very similar pasts and histories because the selection process is designed to make it easy for you to understand and easy for you to trust and relate. If not, it would be too wrenching and too horrific for humanity because the initial reaction, and it will be in some ways, would be fear. And that is not what coming into a galactic process is about. It's about the expansion. We don't want people to have first contact and go running for the hills. You want them to have the true interaction and to have the true relationship with these beings. Expanding your galactic family, that is the plan. There will be some resistance because part of the planet is still developing on such a minor way. You know, when you can't get along with each other, we don't know how easy it will be for you to get along with someone who arrives on a ship. <laughs> So that's really all we have to say about that. Mm, thank you so much, Theo. We, we uh, are so appreciative of the time today that you've had. But we think we would like to bring back uh, Karen at this time and wrap it up. You've done a wonderful job for us all today. Thank you. And we wish you all truly to know that you are love and it's such a simple thing to say, but it is so much bigger than that. You are, as we've said, and will continue to say, the perfect thought of the divine, exactly as you are right now. There is nothing that you can be more than you already are. And that is only a shift in your perception of really realizing who you are. And we wish for all of you that knowing and finding 
that peace and finding out that you are truly love. And we will say to you, Namaste. Namaste, Namaste. Theo. Namaste. 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 Much love. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And thank you, everybody who were watching in. We had a few YouTube problems. Um, we dropped down mm -hmm. to like six viewers at one point and oh. came back up again. Um, sorry for the late start. We had a few technical problems there as well. But Karen, you did an amazing job. Thank you so thank much. You. Yes. Two thank and a half so hours. Much. No really? break. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I, I, gave you, I gave, gave you a chance for an hour. I thought, wow. I don't even know. I didn't know Theos what time. Lots of yeah. stamina. Well, yeah. Theos wanted to keep going, Karen. <laughs> I remember you asking, but that seems like 10 minutes ago you asked. <laughs> I, have no, I have no concept of time, none. Oh, we appreciate all your time. Right. Thank you so much, Karen. Oh, thank you. Wow, two and a half hours. They're long winded. <laughs> so is Jim, Jim back next week? Jim is back Sorry. next week. And the only uh, announcement I have for this week, uh, other than that, is that the new website at hookalo.ning.com, if uh, everybody could shift over to the new site, that would be ultra helpful. The old site, we've kind of outgrown, and it's kind of become dated slightly, so we're going to the new website. And I posted on the events pages. And I can post in the chat boxes for those. But um, and that's all I have as far as announcements. I have one announcement. Uh -huh. On Thursday at 6 p.m. this week EST, I will have a roundtable discussion hangout with Daniel Scranton, and he will be with us for an hour and a half, and he will channel. Yes, that's right. We're looking forward to that one for sure. Yeah. Well, thank I'm, you, Dan, for all your hard work as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You go. I have an announcement about just that I will do be I will be doing free channelings like let's say ten ten of free channelings just to get the thing going for me. I'm gonna leave the restaurant now, so I will have a lot of time to <laughs> to uh, help people. So uh, if you feel like uh, you want to channel something, somebody, some entity, then contact me uh, on I think. Uh, Google Plus would be the best thing, Johannes. Uh, sure, Johannes. If you get your details um, down, um, um, we can yeah. um, we we can just we can talk. As a, I will be doing free channelings, no charge, just to get the thing flow and well, yeah. Thank you. Think about a um, think about a donation as well. Don't think about giving away what you have for free. Make sure there's an exchange there with your donation. Um, obviously, you can give away for free if you want. But um, it's a real pleasure to have um, other channels like you offering your services like that. So thank you, um, Johannes and Namaste. It's wonderful to see how everybody's growing in this community. We've got some amazing channels at the moment. That are, I think we're going to have to have a Cucolo... Well, we're just going to have more Euclid websites. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we can take turns with two channels, that's for sure. And it's very nice to have new, beautiful faces come on and help us out. Um, yeah. Does anyone today like to do a blessing? Did anyone step up for that? Maybe Will? I can do no, it. Mike. Okay, <laughs> Joe Myers. Um, that or a song would be good. Either way. I'll do, uh, just give me a s two seconds. I will just calm down a little bit and I will do a blessing. Okay, thank you so much. So we will all thank you all for attending this lesson today. Your heart is your source of love. Love is the energy of life. Life is you. Love yourself. Love everything else. With love comes love. From your heart to others' hearts, we will continuously share the love just to expand what we love. 
thank you again for attending what you want to attend. You are the reason of yourself to be a part of you, what you are a part of. Now, you're the most important person. Therefore, I love you. <laughs> Thank you all. Love you all. Blessings to you all. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Thank you, Johannes. We really appreciate that. And I guess that does it for today's hangout. And we appreciate everyone watching from YouTube, and everyone who made it into the hangout, and all the great questions. And most especially, we appreciate Karen and Theos. So thank you all very much, and have a great day. And also, I'd just like to have a quick mention um, to support our Guru Dan a little bit because he's lost a, a really, really, really dear friend and I can also really sympathize with, with how he feels right now. So if you want to give a random bit of love and support to anybody at the moment, send yes. it to Dan. Exactly. Lost, if anybody's ever lost a pet, you can relate to this. They are like family. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 incredibly tough, and um, I wish I I, I I wish it's it's meant to be like this. I hope it brings great changes to your life, and Ringo sees that as well. And I just wish everything will work out perfectly for you now, Dan. I really do. I really do wish. Best for you. Best. Love yeah. you, Dan. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I do as well, Dan. Oddly, I wasn't the only person that lost a pet that day. Uh, uh, a member, Twilight, uh, Twilight One, she lost her pet at 20 years. Same day. Same day. It was. Hmm. It was. It was weird. Yeah. So you two were connecting on that. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad you had someone to share with, and her as well. And that's important. That is important. Sharing sharing anything and this is why we have the hangouts, this is why we have our time together. Sharing is so important right now. So yeah. thank you sharing everybody love. for sharing. Yeah. Yes. And sharing yeah. all the love. We have a lot of love to share here. So mm -hmm. don't don't uh, be afraid. Please join us and partake in our conversation. Take place in the webinars. It's really fun and interesting. And thank you again. Yeah. If you'd like to join us, um, obviously uh, our website's www.humancolony.org. Um, you can find all the links um, if you want to join our Hangouts, if you want to get involved in our Facebook groups, if you want to join the live participation webinars or just watch them on YouTube. Every week everything is uh, usually working and on time. So. Um, yeah, please come back for more if you enjoy it. We love you all, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.